What's cracking guys, Alexa here. With this video, I'm kicking off a brand new video series on how to build a deep learning workstation for a particular budget and whether you should build it. So in this first video, I'm gonna walk you through how to do the necessary research uh, to pick the right components for your budget and how to buy those components. In the second video, we're gonna see how to basically assemble the machine. And in the third video of the series, we're going to see how to install the Linux operating system, how to install the necessary CUDA drivers. I know many of you have been complaining about those. And finally, how to install the necessary libraries so that we can run a simple ML app and just verify that everything is working as expected. So I pretty much have already everything I need to build my own deep learning rig. Uh, so I have here the uh, AMD uh, Ryzen 9 7950X uh, beast of a CPU from AMD. Uh, I have the uh, SSD, two terabyte NVMe SSD, basically super fast uh, storage device. We also have the uh, eight terabyte uh, SSD, but this one uses the SETA interface. Hopefully I'm not butchering that name. Uh, and I have 64 gigabytes of RAM memory right here from Kingston. And you can see here some liquid cooling for my CPU. So this is the uh, Liquid Freezer 2 280 ARGB liquid cooling system. And there is a good reason why I picked this one. It's not just because it's beautiful, uh, which it is, I think. Uh, but yeah, we'll see those details a bit later. So I obviously have other components uh, down there. I have the, the, the case. Uh, RTX 3090 is currently being shipped from the States here to London, a generous gift from NVIDIA. So I'm really looking forward to building this, this machine with you guys, showing you the, 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 the steps along, along this journey. And so yeah, hopefully it's gonna be a fun series. So let's first see the, the why behind, why should you build a deep learning uh, workstation and whether you should build one. So in my opinion, there are three main reasons. So the first one is being cost effective. That means that uh, using, if you, if, you, if you build your own deep learning rig, even for 800 bucks or a thousand bucks, uh, you'll basically break even, depending on the amount of GPUs and the usage you are, uh, how much you're using your, your machine, you'll break even in literally six months, one year, year and a half. And you also have to keep in mind that at the end of that journey, you'll still have a machine that you can sell on eBay if you wish to do so. So that's, that money is not gonna like depreciate to $0 uh, in a year, obviously. The second reason would be learning. So you're gonna learn so much by doing the research around the components, by uh, buying them, by uh, assembling the machine and installing the software. So it's a very valuable learning experience in and of itself. And if you can save uh, like 800 bucks, that's already super enough to uh, go through this process and learn everything and demystify the computers if you're intimidated by, by how they work. The third important reason would be performance. And so I'm not sure whether you're aware, but when you're running uh, on a cloud uh, GPU, you're paying for the overheads. You're paying for the virtualization overhead, you're paying for the IO overhead. So in general, those machines are much slower than if they were here locally in your own workstation. So that's additional reason why you would want to build your own uh, workstation. So additionally, you don't have to deal with preemptions, with interrupts, and so it's just much easier. Okay guys, having said all of that, let's now see the particular components that I bought and uh, then let's do a cost comparison between my machine and something that you could buy on the market that's pre-assembled for you and just compare those two. Okay guys, so this is the uh, list of components I bought for my Digital Dragon 1 uh, Deep uh, Learning uh, Workstation. That's the name I gave it. And you can, you can see it here and you can see the final price here, which is definitely the upper, upper limit. It's not gonna cost this much. There are multiple reasons why not. Uh, one of them is that there were price swings going on. Uh, for example, I paid this uh, eight terabyte uh, SSD for only 480 only. Uh, so what they're doing is sometimes uh, in the Black Friday season, they, they start spiking up the prices only to then reduce them by 20% or whatnot to get to the same price that that item had maybe a month or two months ago. So this is definitely the upper limit 
or what you'll be paying, but I'm gonna uh, touch on the cost a bit more a bit later. Uh, for now, I just wanna get you familiar with this PC uh, part picker platform uh, website. It's a very useful uh, website. You're gonna use it uh, yourself to, to build your own uh, awesome deep learning uh, workstation. So let's go through it. So uh, first important uh, tab here is the completed build step. So in case you, you know that you wanna have, for example, RTX uh, 3060, you go here to the completed build step and you hit the RTX 3060 uh, filter basically. And then uh, the, the website uh, filters out those builds that have RTX 3060. And so here you can find some inspiration for how to build your own build. That's one way you can use this, this website. Uh, the other one is to just go to this PC Builder tab and then it offers you literally like a to-do list of the components you need to buy for your workstation. And not only that, it also offers you, it shows you certain incompatibilities or issues that you might have. So let me uh, take a particular example to, to demonstrate that. So I'm gonna go to the saved parts list. I'm gonna open up the Digital Dragon. I'm gonna hit the edit part list and let's go here. So I'm gonna remove the cooler now just for to show you something. And you immediately see the, the, the compatibility, the warning here. And so if you go uh, down here, you can see that the uh, AMD CPU does not include a stock CPU cooler. Adding a CPU cooler to your part list is recommended. Okay, so that means you definitely need to have some type of cooling. For this particular CPU, they even recommend liquid cooling at least 2040 millimeter uh, fans. So that's uh, quite a lot. And so now let's go and pick a particular cooler. Uh, let me just uh, find uh, an alternative that I was considering before, and that's this one, Noctua NHD15. If I paste it right here, uh, we'll see that there are zero compatible products, and that's because there are zero compatible products. If we toggle off the compatibility filter, then we'll see them, and now let's add the Noctua, and you'll immediately see that we have a compatibility, so it says Lee and Lee, so that the case I have uh, is not compatible with the CPU cooler. And indeed, if you go to uh, and check out the dimensions, you'll see that if you were to use the CPU, you couldn't put the front panel on your case, and that kind of sucks. So, so in any case, the PC part picker uh, did its job, and that's why it's a great website that you should definitely use. Okay, so now let's go back here. And let me uh, show you, uh, let's do cost comparison with the Lambda Labs uh, workstation and laptop. I'm gonna first pick this no peripheral single GPU uh, basically setup. And uh, this one I'm gonna use as a baseline and compare it against the Lambda Labs workstation. I'm going to, for fairness, add uh, additional. So I'm gonna hit the edit part list here. I'm going to add additional video card, okay. And I'm gonna add RTX 3090. And I'm doing this because their workstation also has two GPUs, although uh, they have RTX 3080, as we'll soon see. Okay, so the price here uh, with these items is, again, this is the upper limit because you can always find cheaper items you can buy on eBay, you can find cheaper websites than Amazon, and so this is roughly 5,140 pounds. Now, keep in mind that I myself made some mistakes because uh, I decided to go with AMD and even though in 2020 they were much better than Intel, now in 2022, if you look at the high end, uh, like high performance CPUs, it's actually better to buy Intel right now if you wanna have high performance CPU and it would pay 500 pounds to get even better CPU than this one. So I made a mistake here. That's the biggest mistake I made in my build. And so let's now kinda see what would be the actual price if you didn't buy as fancy components as I did, but you would still have fairly um, uh, similar quality build as mine. So let's take the number here. So we have the 5,140 um, currently. So let's subtract from that 240 uh, because roughly the Intel processor costs uh, 500. So that's, uh, that's that. And then motherboard, you can find, certainly you can find something for like 300 pounds. Although it would be harder for you to find the, uh, you, you couldn't fit uh, maybe a, a two, a two, um, two GPUs, especially the, the big ones like RTX 3090. So this is maybe, maybe to be fair, let's put 250. You can definitely shave off some of the price there. Uh, you can buy cheaper memory for sure. This is Kingston, their famous brand. If you, you can go cheaper, you can maybe save 100 pounds there. Uh, you can certainly save at least 
at least 440 here uh, on the SSD, so 440, because uh, this is SSD. You can, you can just have hard drive. You wouldn't lose too much, and you would save a bunch of money here, as you can see. Uh, also, you could buy cheaper uh, NVM, like cheaper SSD. You would say maybe 50 pounds there. Uh, and then finally, I think I, I've done a great job with case and uh, th they are not including the price of the PSU. So I'm gonna add like maybe, I, I forgot the price of that thing, but, but let's say it's around two, 200. Actually, let me see just for a second, what's roughly the price of this thing. So the price is, let's say around, let's say it's 300. Let's say it's even 300, it's, that's fine. Uh, so I'm gonna open up the calculator Let's add the um, uh, let's add the, the 300, and so we end up with roughly 4,300 uh, pounds for a powerful build such as this one. Okay, now let's do the side by side comparison. Okay, let's do this. So I'm gonna take this tab, put it on the side here. Uh, my computer is glitching for some reason. Okay, so here we are. On the left-hand side, we have the Lambda Labs workstation. On the right-hand side, we have our build, okay? Remember, the price was around 4,300 in case you decide to just cut some corners, so to speak. Okay, so here we are. Let's see what the what specs are here. So they the reason they pay so much is because you get warranty for three years. Uh, they pre-assemble the thing for you. They install the Linux, they install the drivers, they install the libraries, everything. But you can do all of that yourself and save some money. So that's the main trade-off you you wanna you wanna uh, basically pay for here. So just think about what you want. So we have the they have the uh, AMD Threadripper Pro. And that's a more expensive CPU, actually twice the, the price of the AMD Ryzen 9. But the thing is, you don't need it. Unless you go for three plus GPUs, this is a waste of money. So you don't need more than, than this one. So that's that's kind of, you could save money, bunch of money there, unless you're going for the three plus GPU setup. We're gonna see later why. Uh, and because me personally, I was I was basically um, uh, deciding whether I should buy Threadripper or this one, and I decided to buy this one. And you'll see the reasons a bit later. They have two RTX 3080. Those are way cheaper than 3090, uh, so you can save money there as well. So it'll be even even cheaper. They have a bit more memory, okay? So that that's that's fine. They have four terabytes. We have ten terabytes. And uh, finally, that's it. So that means you would be paying eight thousand for this build. So let's see. So 8,000, uh, this is, let's see how many pounds. So it's roughly 6,840 pounds for a weaker setup. Because if you if we were to pick RTX 3080, uh, we'd basically uh, have, have uh, saved more money. But they do have uh, more expensive CPU, which you don't need. So eh, it's kind of, basically you're saving at least 2,500 2, pounds if you build it your, on your own. That's the, 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 the basically the summary uh, of this analysis. Okay, whoops, let me just reopen that one. Okay, so let's go here. Uh, they also offer laptops and some of the people on LinkedIn asked me whether they should buy the laptop. So here is the analysis, a quick analysis here as well. So you can see here the price is, this is still more expensive than our build. And let's see the specs. So the specs are, you have a single RTX 3080 Ti, that's a bit better than 3080. Uh, you have the, uh, let's see, they have um, Intel i7, which is way cheaper and way uh, lower quality than the uh, uh, CPU we cho we've, we've, we've chosen. They have a bit uh, worse uh, RAM, although this doesn't matter that much because this is like 4,800, we have 5,200 Hertz, although this is basically a gimmick, you don't care about the, 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 the Hertz that much. Uh, it's, it's equally good memory, pretty much. Um, and then uh, they have only two terabytes of SSD and blah, blah, blah. They additionally have the screen. So you get awful, so much better build for less money that it's crazy. Plus, laptops are poor with thermals. There is no way that this laptop won't have thermal issues. I know this firsthand, having had Omen 17 laptop with RTX 2080, I had Severe, severe like thermal issues and I never use my machine for training something for more than like two hours max and then it's literally you can you can boil eggs on your laptop there is no way you're gonna have a good cooling system in a, in a laptop it's just the physics of it it's, it won't allow it so that means you can use laptop only in case you want to run inference only in that case you should buy a laptop but like 
I, I think this is definitely an overkill. That's my opinion. Uh, just take the pros and cons I mentioned. You do get the warranty. You do get the portability. You obviously cannot pack the lap. You, you cannot pack the build we are we are we are creating here into your like uh, briefcase and go to to a local Starbucks or whatnot. So those are the pros and cons. You decide for yourself. I'm just trying to uh, give you as much information as possible here. Okay, guys. So quickly uh, onto this blog. Uh, why building your own deploying computer is 10x cheaper than AWS. So there is a lot of blogs similar to this one where they'll show you for uh, how many months you'll need, depending on your setup, how many GPUs you have, uh, until you break even compared to using the cloud. And as I said previously, I think in the beginning of the video, the difference is you will end up with a machine, so you, you'll end up with something, whereas here you just pay the cloud and then you, you just don't have anything left to sell later on. Whereas with your machine, you can sell your components on eBay and get back some money that you invested beforehand. Okay, so uh, won't get into much more detail. Basically, I think it's more cost effective if you're any uh, if, if you're serious about machine learning, if you want to spend some years in this field, you definitely need your I think it's an it's a no brainer. I, I should have done it before basically. Okay, let's go through some research right now. So um, I obviously went through many blogs and videos to, to, to learn and then pick the components. So one of the, the main resources is Tim Depmer's uh, blog. So you can see here that the title of this one is which GPUs to get for deep learning, my experience and advice for using GPUs in deep learning. That's one of his blogs. The second one is uh, this one where he shows how you can build uh, the whole machine, not just how to pick the, the, the GPU. So you can see here a full hardware guide to deep learning. And in this one, he walks you through a lot of the components and not just the GPUs, okay? So let's quickly skim through these blogs. And also keep in mind that he did make some mistakes. So never always take everything people say and write, especially if it's an older blog, always take it with a grain of salt. So now let's quickly walk through the, the, the blog here. Let's see some important details. First things first, the, the first part of the blog has a lot of technical details that you do, probably don't care about if you're here to just build your own PC. So you can ignore things like, like sparse network training, obviously, et cetera, et cetera. So I think a reasonable thing to do is start from this new fan design thermal issue. So that's where the high level uh, talk starts. Before that, it was just like a lot of uh, technical technicalities that you probably don't care about. Okay. so. Uh, thermal issues, this is relevant if you're building three plus uh, GPU setup. If not, you can also ignore those parts. But like in, in any case, if you have enough time, go through the whole blog. I think it's a valuable learning experience. Uh, you can also uh, uh, limit the, the, the power of your GPUs through software. And doing that, you lose some performance, but you get, you get uh, a lot of benefit uh, thermally. Uh, so, uh, so, so, so in the, in the opposite way, if you had thermal uh, throttling, you would lose even more performance than doing it uh, beforehand. But hopefully if you pick a right case and if you pick right cooling, you won't have thermal issues and you will not have to limit your power. Okay, that's one thing. And then he has some cool charts here showing um, comparisons between different GPUs. And you can see that RTX 3090 is right like up there among the giants like V100 and A100. And I guess these numbers are, I'm fairly confident these numbers are from the cloud. So that's the thing I mentioned and that's that these GPUs, the server GPUs are, are, are suffering from virtualization and IO. And so you get that V100 is maybe just a bit better than RTX 3090. Keep that in mind. So that's why I want to have a local machine. It's much better. Uh, although you do pay for maintenance and stuff like that. And, uh, and you have to do the research, etc. Okay, so here we can see normalized performance per dollar. And so, um, so you can see here the RTX 3080 uh, looks to be the best one. But keep in mind that the performance here does not take into the account the fact that we have 24 gigabytes in RTX 3090. So that means if you're training bigger models, like some bigger transformers, that that's very much important. That's very much important. And then the value of this one would be much bigger. So here, I think they're just, uh, he, he's just taking into account the performance in the sense of how many numbers can this GPU crunch in a second, like the, 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 the pure power, but not the memory, which is also important. So depending on your needs, you might, you also should take this chart with a grain of salt. That's my, my, my point here. Okay. So, uh, he then goes on to say, uh, whether you should buy more, whether you should have more than 11 gigabytes or less. So in my um, experience so far, let me open up my GitHub profile here. 
most of the projects I work with were um, like you could do them uh, with eight gigabyte uh, VRAM GPU, that was fine. So if I open up, for example, the Get project, if I open up the Deep Dream project I made here, you can see that the hardware requirements here are fairly fairly like low. You only need around two gigabytes to train the Get so the graph attention network on some of the simpler data sets such as Quora, etc. Uh, you also need for the Deep Dream, you might need like a couple of gigabytes literally also. So you can see here around two gigabytes. But if you get into the territory, if you want to train StyleGAN or you want to train actual transformer, you will need much more memory and you definitely need to go for 11 uh, plus gigabytes. That's why I decided to have the RTX 3090, okay? So let's continue here. You can also obviously fit the 24 gigabyte model uh, into smaller uh, device, but you will have to deal with mixed precision. You will have to deal with gradient checkpointing, model parallelism, data parallelism, blah, 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 all of that, all of those details. Well, not data parallelism unless you have multiple uh, GPUs, but you get my point. Um, basically, I covered uh, all of these techniques in my previous videos. I'm gonna link them somewhere here if you're curious to learn more, but in general, a rule of thumb, if you know you're gonna train bigger models, just go with more memory. Don't 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 play the hero. Uh, okay, let's continue here. Let's see what else. So he's basically he he's built uh, uh, teams built um, uh, like clusters and servers for his uh, university, and so there is a lot of details here if you want to build um, much more powerful uh, server type of uh, workstations uh, and discussions around whether you need a PCI 4 or not. Well, PCI 5.0 is already a thing. So 4.0 is pretty much standard nowadays. And for GPU, you, you don't want to go with 4X, especially if you buy a fancy GPU like, like RTX 30 or 40 series, you don't want to go with 4X with four PCI lanes. You want to go with eight or 16. You, otherwise you will lose performance that you, you spend your money for. So it doesn't make any sense to be honest. Um, okay. As I said, go and read through the blog uh, at your own pace. It's too long for me to cover every detail. I just want to kind of skim it. He gives some very useful tips here as well. Uh, and uh, I definitely strongly recommend you check it out. Let's now skim his second blog here. So uh, which GPU you should pick, uh, the RAM. Uh, and basically he says here that the, the clock rate is uh, like a, a gimmick and you can, you can watch this video from Linus. A tech Tips YouTube channel and he says that basically it's, it's pretty much a gimmick so you can save some money and just grab a RAM that has lower uh, basically clock rate and you'll still have the, pretty much the same amount of performance. So yeah, um, recommendations on CPUs, um, how many cores, uh, frequency there, drive, uh, power supply unit, a lot of details. As I said, I will not be digging into, into the actual um, particularities of this blog even he also just tells you how, how many monitors you should have I currently have two monitors I think two or three are, are a sweet spot but it also depends on your own preferences basically okay so having skimmed through Tim's blogs and uh, let's now uh, point some of the details that might not be necessarily correct so one of those is uh, this recommendation here. So add up watts of GPUs plus CPU, then multiply the total by 110% for required wattage. If you listen to this advice and you have RTX 3090, you're likely gonna end up having a system that crashes every now and then. I already had people reach out and tell me this formula doesn't work for those GPUs. And you can also find, I found this block here. And if we, let's just find the 600 watt keyword here. Okay, so here it is. So here is a paragraph from this blog. Um, naive me thought that I would be able to power four uh, 350 watts, a quote unquote GPUs. So it's quote unquote because that's the official TDP, but as we'll soon see, it's actually pulling much more. So uh, nope, doesn't work, not even on 240 uh, volts. A lesser known fact about 390s is they actually pull burst currents of up to 600 watts. This means that uh, uh, this, PSU will power on and even run four of the of the of the GPUs, but it will randomly trip the overcurrent protection when all three uh, uh, GPUs uh, simultaneously draw the, their peak power, which happens every couple of hours. This was a fun one to figure out. 
I also had friends reach out and tell me they, they hit the same issue. So as I said, take every single information you find with a grain of salt. That's why you want to have multiple blogs, multiple resources, just see and do some type of majority voting and figure out stuff for your for yourself. Okay. Uh, there are some other details that are worth mentioning. Um, so let's go here. I have some. So he also mentions uh, that that the uh, that the computer case does not matter for 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 cooling. But I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the opposite uh, conclusion here. So let me just find that thing. So does computer case design matter for cooling? Uh, team says here no. Uh, GPUs are usually perfectly cooled if there is at least a small gap between GPUs. Case design will give you one to three. Uh, centigrade uh, uh, better temperatures. Uh, space between GPUs will uh, provide you with 10 to 30 um, basically Celsius improvements. The bottom line, if you have space between GPUs, cooling does not matter. If you have no space between GPUs, you need the right cooler design, blah, 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 blah. Bottom line, this is not actually correct. With a proper case, uh, you can get uh, up to 10 or more degrees uh, improvements, and that's quite significant. So if we open up this blog, so, sorry, this video, I found this video from this great uh, channel that does benchmarking of various components called Gamers Nexus. And you can see for this particular Corsair Crystal case that I was personally considering for my, for my setup, you can see the difference when you remove the front panel uh, and when the front panel is on, which is just like pure aesthetics, and of course, okay, so some, some protection against dust, etc. But there is a difference of eight degrees. And you can also see that some cases here have much lower uh, temperatures than some other cases. So cases do matter. As long as you don't take a completely shitty case, you're, you're probably fine. But like this, this is something that's worth considering and doing a small research also, not just uh, by anything you find. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the final thing he mentions is the main mistake that people make is that people pay too much attention to PCI lanes of a CPU. You should not care much about PCI lanes. Instead, just look up if your CPU and motherboard combination supports the number of GPUs that you want to run. This is true in case you don't want to use the NVMe SSDs and because those guys use four PCI lanes. So that means if you're going to stick two of the SSDs, you'll, you'll eat eight you eat eight uh, PCI lanes, and that leaves you with much less lanes for your GPUs. So you need to keep that in mind as well. So uh, PCI and lanes matter if if you're if you're trying to squeeze out the performance from your from your setup. Okay. Okay. Worth mentioning here is also uh, Tim's recent tweet on the RTX 40 series. And again, I would take this with a grain of salt uh, until I see the actual numbers. But it's a useful piece of information since it's coming from Tim. Who, who, who does have some reputation in this space. So finished RTX 4090 modeling, not good. If you have an RTX 3090, probably best to wait four years for chiplets and consumer HPM. This is what dead Moore's law looks like. Uh, you can only scale cost perf with features, but you can only add tensor core once. We are stuck more soon. It's kind of pessimistic to be honest. And until I see the actual numbers, I would be fairly skeptical, but this goes on to tell you that just because a new series came out doesn't mean you should immediately sell your older GPUs and go and buy the next new thing. You need to do your own research and also always question even the authority because they, they sometimes inadvertently make mistakes. So just keep that in mind. Okay, let's continue here. This is an amazing block I found. Uh, this guy actually built uh, his own server uh, with I think eight GPUs or something. So even though that's probably for the most for most of you guys not going to be a relevant use case, uh, he still um, goes through the rationale and he uh, gives a lot of useful information and, and, and tips on how to build your uh, your um, uh, setup. So do go through this blog. I, I strongly recommend it. And so yeah. And um, next up, what I've done is somewhere on the bottom of this block, I found like a setup that has two RTX 3090, which is exactly the setup that I care about. And so I opened up the PC part picker here and I used this particular list as an inspiration for my use case. But you'll probably have a different use case. So just, but like, just get that pattern of, of, of opening up stuff and like doing side by side comparisons. That's, that's, I guess, the point I'm trying to make here. Uh, 
I mentioned this blog where we saw the 600 watt uh, tip about the RTX 3090. Uh, this is an amazing piece of, 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 of uh, information here. This guy actually now works at OpenAI. He used to work at Google. He has two huge servers with like eight GPUs. He's like renting one to earn some money, like uh, renting on the Vest AI platform. And he's, he's using the second one for, for his personal projects, if I understood him well. And so you can see his machines, but he has a lot of very useful tips. He's been building these setups for, for, for uh, quite some years now. And so you might learn a lot from, from this blog as well. So I, I do recommend it. And finally, uh, Daniel here, uh, Daniel Bork has uh, a very cool uh, video where, uh, where like blog and video. So his video is like one hour or something long. So you can see here, one hour long. Uh, he's basically assembling a, a, a workstation together with his buddy. And I think it might be an interesting resource, even though the components are fairly obsolete and maybe it's not as informative as, as some of the other blogs here. But I think it's a nice story and I think it's definitely worth checking it out. Um, Obviously, uh, I, I, I am present on YouTube, so I consume a lot of YouTube content myself. And basically, I found a lot of videos. And here I just opened two random videos, but there are many other good ones uh, that, uh, that I've used to just open up their PC part, uh, the, the, the component lists, and just use that as a, as a source of inspiration. That's basically it. Guys, that's pretty much it. Now that you have, now that you've read all of the blogs, all of the resources, you've watched the video, you collected the information, try and take some notes, extract some tips that people gave you. Now you want to basically uh, start picking your own components. And how you do that is you open up the PC part picker, you then uh, go and go to the PC builder here, you hit the start new, and you start going component by component, and then you do your research. So here's how I would do it. So first, so now we have the CPU. So first thing I, 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 I've done is I went through all of these blocks and I, I checked out the recommendations they're giving for the CPU. And then I get some like rough intuition, okay? And so what I ended up uh, figuring out is that most of them are recommending like the uh, AMD CPU. So this guy here, uh, go with AMD, okay? And then Tim is also, I think Tim was also um, mentioning AMD somewhere here. Let me just find it. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but like I think it was here. Um, AMD GPUs are not competitive, but we are not talking about the uh, GPUs. We're talking about CPUs. Let me just find it. Okay, so here it says uh, AMD CPUs are cheaper and better than Intel CPUs in general for deep learning. So as you can tell, everyone is recommending AMDs and I kind of fell for the trap. Uh, as I previously mentioned, uh, currently on the high performance end, uh, it's better to go with Intel. They're cheaper and they're better, they have better performance. So because of that, take everything with a grain of salt, do your own research. Okay, so let's see, let me open up the OneNote here and let me show you some additional details. I ultimately ended up, by doing this research, I ended up with, uh, with uh, two options. Uh, the AMD Ryzen 9, uh, which is recommended on a lot of uh, reviews. So you can see here, if I open up a random this Tech Raider uh, 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 article, you can see that the best AMD processor here is precisely the one I've chosen. And then uh, let me go back here. And then the second option I really had was the Thread Reaper. But then after doing some research and finding this source, for example, uh, if you go here and if you read this chapter, let me just find it. Do you need a Thread Reaper? or Ryzen CPU. And then they say, before getting started with picking a TRX 40 motherboard, you have to make sure that you're going with Threadripper out of genuine need and not falling prey to marketing. Now I assume you do need a high core count processor for your workloads. So here's a list of reasons why you might choose the Threadripper instead of the Ryzen 9. And the main details here are, if you need a lot of PCI lanes, so my CPU has 24 PCI lanes, which is enough for two GPUs, and then you can squeeze in a couple of NVMEs. But that's it. And here, the the, the Thread Reaper usually has like at least I think like around 100 or more PCI lanes. It's crazy. These are made to create triple or quad GPU setups, if if not more. If you, like it's three plus GPUs. So if you want to have three plus GPUs in the future on your workstation, then definitely go ahead with Thread Reaper. But if not, then just go with a 2x cheaper CPU, which is already overpriced compared to Intel CPU. So yeah, you're, you're saving up some money by, by doing smart research. Let's continue on here. Uh, next up, I've chosen the cooler. So uh, again, I've done my research. 
I found a lot of sources recommending this Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 and also this Noctua NHT15 air cooler. So this is a liquid cooling system, this is an air cooling system. Liquid is usually better, more effective, but uh, there is the, the danger uh, of, of potential leak, which could be catastrophic, but usually does not happen. So, so it's kind of a trade-off, but yeah. So I wanted to buy Noctua uh, ultimately after having read uh, some of the, of the articles uh, showing that it's good enough, but it turned out it's not compatible as we saw before. It's not compatible with the case I've chosen. And so I decided to go with the Arctic liquid freezer. Uh, it's basically only maybe 10, 20 pounds uh, more expensive. So it was a, a good decision in my opinion. Uh, for the motherboard, uh, what I've done is I went for it and opened up this uh, Overclockers uh, website and I sorted the, the AM5 motherboards. So those are the uh, the motherboards that are compatible with the AMD Ryzen 9 CPU. And then I sorted them by price in a descending fashion. And then I went from the cheapest one uh, all the way to the more expensive ones. And I was looking for the number of PCI lanes and I was looking for the clearance. And the first G uh, motherboard that, that uh, was good enough was this Art Pro or something. Let me find it. So this one, the Asus Art Pro. So if I open up that one, so let me just quickly copy paste that one and let's open up Amazon. So let's open up Amazon here. I'm gonna copy paste the name here. Let's find it. And here it is. I think that's the one. Yep, let me open it up. And now let me open up the uh, let me open up the actual one I, I bought and that's the Crosshair Hero. So that's the one I bought. As you can see, it's quite uh, more expensive, but yeah. So I'm gonna tell you why I decided to go with this one. So uh, I first went to buy this one. I went to watch the video and uh, somebody wrote that basically if you stick a single GPU uh, that, that takes three slots, so that means 30 or 40 series or even 20 series, um, he, he said, that person said that basically uh, it's almost touching this second PCI slot. So these white bars you can see, those are the PCI slot, the slots where you plug in your GPU. And he said it's literally almost touching uh, that slot. So that means if, if you were to pick that, if you were to put the second GPU, you would probably have thermal issues, if not clearance issues. And so because of that, I knew I cannot buy this, uh, this, this, this motherboard. And so I just went and found this one. And if you take a look, so this is maybe a primitive approach, but it actually works. Uh, the reason it works is because both mo motherboards are uh, the ATX uh, format. And if you just take a look, visual look, because manuals don't actually have the exact dimensions. So I, I even opened up, so I was so crazy that I, I even opened up a manual and uh, I couldn't find the, the centimeters or, or the actual physical dimensions. So I had to eyeball through Amazon uh, pictures and figure out that this one is probably uh, good enough. So if you take a look here, you can see that this one has definitely more, whoops, this one has definitely more space than, than the, the uh, art, uh, Pro one and so I just kind of if, if we put them side by side Let me just do it like this. It's gonna be much more clear uh, I'm gonna do it like this so you can see it here and You can see it here. So this one has enough space uh, Presumably oops for for what I need Again, that's the research I've, I've done. Uh, that's the way I've done it. Unfortunately, some of these new motherboards, they don't have enough information online, so I had to, to do my best to figure out stuff. Okay, I'm gonna uh, close up all of these and let's go back to the next component. The next component is memory. Again, I just went for the Kingston because I previously had experience with Kingston. And you can see a note here that I bought a much cheaper one on CCL online as opposed to buying, uh, I, would, I would pay 400 pounds on Amazon for the 5,200 Hertz version. And so that was kind of uh, a, a huge cost saving for me. Okay, next up we have the storage. So for the storage, um, Again, done uh, my research. I saw that the Pro 90, uh, 990 is coming out soon, but they're only pre-orders. And because I don't really want to optimize that much, I just uh, just decided to go with the 980, which is 980 Pro, which is currently one of the best 
SSDs uh, for consumers on the market. And so I also saw that I don't need the heat sinks because my motherboard already has the, the heat sinks. So that would be uh, A, uh, cost ineffective and B, uh, incompatible with my motherboard. So take care of details such as that one. Uh, so I decided to go with two terabytes where I'll be keeping uh, this kind of obsolete. I'll, I'll be keeping like operating system there. Uh, also my video uh, material is gonna be on that uh, SSD and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm gonna keep bigger data sets on the eight terabyte SSD. Uh, you can go with the hard drive if you want. I just wanted to uh, have something that's, um, I simply wanted to have the best the best component here, and so I decided to go with SSD. Also, the blog, one of the blogs I mentioned before, so let me just find it. Uh, so I think it was this one. Um, yeah, I think this was the place where I saw the recommendation for this particular um, um, uh, SSD. So you can see uh, the Samsung, that's pretty much the same one as I bought. I, I maybe bought the 870, and he said, um, I also have an array of these ones, blah, blah, blah. They're, these are quite pricey these days, but I picked them up for under 500 bucks per PC on a lucky Black, Fr Black Friday sale. So I also bought them for less than 500, but it was actually before Friday sale because now we have a spike, as you saw. It's not now for 640 or something. So that's kind of funny what people do and manipulate the prices. You, you gotta be careful and, and, and aware of, of that phenomena. Okay, let's go back here. Uh, I also kind of saw this Fire Cuda 530 being a serious competitor, even outperforming the, this particular SSD. And then I saw that it lacks some software tools like Samsung Magnish, uh, Magician. And, uh, and so I just decided I don't wanna uh, go with this brand this time. So I, I made a, a slight sacrifice probably performance wise uh, and uh, decided to go with Samsung. Although Samsung apparently has better random uh, access uh, speeds than, than the Fire Cuda. So I, I don't know, they are fairly com comparable, I guess. For the case, um, I initially wanted to go with the Corsair uh, a Carbid Series Air 540. Most of the uh, blocks I showed you recommend this one, but it's not big enough for RTX 3090. Um, it is, but I think it's gonna be super tight I saw some people make it, but like it's gonna be super tight and then you might have some heating issues and I don't really wanna go there. And so I just wanted to go with the successor. So I found this one, the, the Corsair Crystal Series RGB. So this model, and this one looks fairly nice. Like it's a it's a beautiful uh, uh, case. So let me just open it up here. So you can, so you can see it, let me, let me find an image. And you can see it's a very, very nice uh, uh, case, looks very nice. Uh, but the thing is, uh, as we saw before, it has some heating issues. And so I decided to go with the uh, uh, Lian Li uh, case, which is also recommended all around the place. Uh, it's a strong competitor. It has better thermals and it's twice uh, the price. Sorry, it's uh, t twice uh, cheaper than, than, uh, than the above uh, case. So that's the, the only con was pretty much the, the way it looks. But since I already have uh, fancy liquid cooling with ARGB lighting and stuff. I don't really care. So so yeah Finally uh, PSU uh, I have done the calculation that team and others recommended According to that I would need around 1200 watts, but to have the safe mar margin a uh, margin against the, the, the these uh, uh, Current pools from the from the RTX 3090 that can go up to 600 watts I just went with a much stronger uh, PSU and I decided to go with 1,600 watts myself. And uh, that's it. Uh, the brand and the particular model uh, was recommended across many of these blogs. So that's why I ended up using them. So I think even this one is using the uh, this particular, yeah, it's using the same PSU. Uh, so that's the OpenAI guy. And um, also I think this guy is also using EVGA. Yep, he's also using it. And, and so uh, apparently uh, it's a very uh, reputable brand and uh, I just decided to go, to go with it. And that's it, I'm not gonna focus on the peripheries, uh, some of the details. Um, so I wanted a mechanical keyboard and so I've chosen the, the Cherry MX Browns, which are apparently the best ones for, for typing, whereas this one is super silent, it doesn't have the clicky sound, and this one is too loud, it has too much of the clicky sound, and so again, I've done some research there and, and bought the components. And guys, that's pretty much it. Um, let me now quickly show you how, uh, again, how you would go about picking your own uh, setup. So 
uh, go and see what are the priciest components and those are GPUs and CPUs. If you take a look at my setup here, you can use my list of course, it's gonna be open and public. So you can see that the, the CPU and the GPUs are the, the priciest uh, components and there is also the motherboard. So depending on your budget, what you wanna do is you wanna max out, you wanna take the best possible GPU. If you're doing this for machine learning, GPU is the, is the name of the game, much more important than the CPU, you just wanna have the GPU. And so after that, uh, try and squeeze in the, the, the basically uh, some some of the CPU the CPU and other components, but you want to max out. The, uh, to be honest, I, I would max out the, the the money for the GPU and then try and allocate the rest for everything else. Obviously, I can't give you a particular. Each one of you is going to have a different set of needs, and so by just giving you the tools, the ideas, the way I think and and, and do research, hopefully, it's going to help you uh, do do it for yourself. Okay, so now uh, just as a as an simple exercise, uh, let me show you how you would go about, once you have the set of components, you, you've chosen the components, you now wanna buy the components. You obviously don't wanna just buy from the first website, you wanna do some research. And so if you go and do this, if you just uh, search for this one and just hit price, you'll see a lot of websites offering this item. And so if, we, if you were to just go and be dumb and you go to Amazon and just buy it without doing any research, you would lose around 200 pounds. And this is that's why this is a great example. So I'm gonna open up a couple of these uh, websites. Uh, Price Runner and this website Price Spy are aggregators. So that means they're not selling the, uh, the, the case themselves. They're just pointing to other uh, sites that, have, uh, that are offering the, the case. So let's let's see what I say. So we, we first let's open up the Amazon link. So here you can see that. Um, uh, let me just. I, I'll actually have to type it in manually here because this one doesn't have any price associated with it. So you can see here it's offered for 340 pounds, and I bought it for around 100 something pounds. And so you can see that this one here, which is the same p, uh, the same case, uh, and has much more uh, reviews, uh, doesn't have the price, which means it's out of stock. And it's probably this one probably was uh, offered for 150, and now because it's uh, out of stock, some competitors can can basically offer much more, uh, can 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 boost up uh, the the prices, and uh, and uh, you don't want to buy it from 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 here basically. So if you go here, you can find some uh, other companies like uh, these ones that offer it for 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 uh, much uh, lower prices. But keep in mind, you again don't want to just go to a random. A company whose reputation you know nothing of and just buy it because I've seen a lot of comments and I know people and like uh, you can you can just go in Google and you find in various forums people complaining about like either not getting the item the item is broken uh, like a lot of problems if you just go with a random company so you don't want to to to, to go and uh, basically do some research on these companies and so what I've done in particular for this um, uh, for this case I, I just I googled uh, CCL online because back then on this on the aggregators this was the best price the CCL online and so I just opened up the Reddit that's gonna be your friend definitely and you open up some of these review uh, sites and so on Reddit you can see that the, the comments are all legit even though they are five years ago if they were if, if something has changed basically the, if the company became corrupt since five years ago somebody would have commented on this on this on this thread pretty much but you, you see predominantly positive comments here I use them all the time they're a good company I've used them quite a lot blah 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 so so yeah so it seems uh, positive feedback on reddit and you can see f positive feedback here uh, for 26,000 reviews 4.7 is quite a high grade Again, keep in mind that uh, these websites, they are always competing with each other and it's not always fair play. And so they sometimes just hire bots or whatnot to, to uh, or, or actual people to uh, put either five stars or, or one stars, depending on whether it's your company that, that you're doing that for or, or competitor. And so you can see here, a lot of ones recently so a lot of ones and I, I suspect I highly suspect this has to do with Black Friday sales because uh, at that point of time it's in the best interest of the competitor to uh, well gain all of the all of the market and just kind of reduce the credibility of the competitors which is kind of sad practice but people do that and so according to these couple of uh, reviews you would think this is like 3.2 or something it's 4.7 so it's kind of hard but like go and open up a couple links and then you'll know that the company is legit and um, and for me that was the case I, I had a very nice experience dealing with this particular company
Okay, guys, that's it for the first video of this series. Uh, I, I really tried my, my best to give you as much information as possible. I'm going to link all of the resources I mentioned down in the video description. In case anything is missing, feel free to comment down below. Uh, also, any feedback is appreciated. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions. I'll try my best and, and, and reply to each one of them uh, over the next couple of weeks. In the next video, we'll see the how to assemble. Uh, the uh, workstation and then in the final one we'll see how to install all of the software until then cheers